first we're going to add our welcome letter yeah. in English yeah. and French. And then at the back, we were going to add the penstock history. The story history. of the penstock, yeah. In English and French. Yeah. So I think that will Lynn and Bob Milling are the innkeepers of the Wakefield Mill Inn. They welcomed their first guests in the summer of 2001, almost 200 years after Fairburn set the mill in motion. We knew that there was an awful lot to offer people uh, for activities, whether it be equestrian or canoeing, cycling, skiing, uh, or just uh, just paddling on the river. Uh, what the community needed was a larger accommodation base so that people could stay overnight and enjoy it. There was a lot of frustration among business people that um, people would could not stay overnight and so we knew that that was, a, was something that really had to be addressed. 94-95 was when the NCC decided to go to tender for um, use of the building and to lease the building. It started to germinate with us. We were both doing different things. Bob was in renewable power production. I was with the federal government. Um, it, it was about four years ago that we uh, sort of started working on this project. The project did take a little longer than we'd planned. It, uh, it took us quite a while to come to the conclusion that the building did require a, uh, a new addition on it to be, to be feasible. And you can see throughout the building that you really did hold on to as much as you could of the original construction. Well, we did. We had to, <clears throat> we had to try and tell the story um, through the building uh, by retaining the original floors, by bringing out the, the rock, by exposing some of the building which had been burned in the uh, 1910 fire. Some of the uh, bricks that were actually melted, we had a choice of getting rid of them or leaving them, and, and uh, I think they, they look quite nice. I guess the main challenges along the way <clears throat> were, um, were working with three principal building types, uh, three and a half foot stone walls, uninsulated brick walls, and then essentially uh, a wooden walls from the grain silo section uh, and then with the new construction it was a different type of construction altogether so to get the building properly air conditioned lighted plumbed heated ventilated that was the <laughs> that was the biggest uh, that was the biggest challenge there were many times when it just shouldn't it just we should have quit uh, it, it just didn't it shouldn't have gone forward. I remember one point there was a, about a 35-inch snowfall, and uh, it was at least a year before construction was going to begin, and I had to go and get some blueprints or something, and even to get to my office during that snowfall required a 25-minute walk through hip-deep snow, and it was about 10 o'clock at night, and I thought, oh, this is, this is not a wise thing to do. So sticking with it was the, was the biggest challenge. One thing that struck me during the development phase when you're standing in the building and it's empty, the construction workers have gone home, is just the feeling you get of how difficult life was when this place was built and when it was operated. There, when you look around the building, there's just there's nothing easy about it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it was difficult to build, it was difficult to operate, it was difficult to maintain. And when you think about the purpose of the place, it was really, its sole purpose was just to make flour for the bread on your table. And it's, it's just when you think about how easy it is to buy a loaf of white bread at the local corner store today, um, and you stand in the basement of this place with its big steel, its big rocks, its the labor just it's just it's palpable inside the building. Lynn and Bob's sons, Gabrielle and Luc, are learning a lot about the past and its important role in their present. We moved up here because we wanted to set put roots down and and the mill as the mill project evolved it became very very clear that one of the big reasons we wanted to work to do this project was to establish roots for our family um, and establish roots in the community I wanted our children to understand how their parents worked I, I wanted them to have a connection between mom and dad and 
what they did in the daytime. This is the painting that we selected for here. Let's put it up. So what do you think? In fact, the whole project is something of a family affair. Lynn's father, Guy, is the official photographer, and her mother, Pat, was one of the decorators. Oh, yes. Now, what do you think? It's good up there. I think it's going to work. The look we wanted for the mill was um, somewhat rustic, uh, reminiscent of a mill, and yet luxury and a sense of textures and, and comfort. Uh, it, it meant that our furniture, both what we call the case goods or the wood furniture, and the soft, the upholstered furniture, had to, um, had to have a very specific look for us. Marc Bézier of Le Pêche won the contract to build furniture for the inn. Once the pieces were constructed, they were sent to Jean-Pierre Parent in Elmer to be finished. Jean-Pierre would distress the furniture, which I think that's a great term. It, it basically means that pockmark it, he would mark it. So you really, when you walk into a room, you've got a sense that you're looking at an, an old piece of furniture. Bringing the past into the future was the creative plan Lynn and Bob envisioned. It includes Ian Montague, a descendant of William Fairburn, as the mill's baker. We had to get rid of some of the big equipment that wouldn't fit in the, in the new inn. And we were approached by a organic miller from South Mountain. And he asked us for the equipment and uh, said he was going to use it in his process. And my response was, well, can we use your, your grains uh, in our bread when we open? And that's what we're doing. If you were to look at the dining room right now, you'd never realize that it was once the engine room for the mill. We decided to name the dining room the Penstock, and that name is derived from a 300-foot water course which carried the water which powered the mill. And that's the power that milled the grain for the flour that they sold. Whether visitors come to enjoy the dining room, to brainstorm in a meeting room, or to explore the neighborhood, they'll all leave touched by a passion Lynn and Bob have come to know as their mission. On a daily or at least weekly basis, we have um, a number of people who come in from, from the region or people who have lived here over the last, lived in the region the last quarter of a century, last half century and they come in and tell stories about the about bringing their grain to the mill um, about living here and it's been uh, it's been interesting the uh, the the stories that they that they do tell and the the love that they have of the of the site and the building and the pleasure that they now take in in, in the fact that it's been it's been changed it's been it's been brought back to life The pleasure and pride that Bob and I feel right now is one we have just opened, um, what we hope will be a lovely inn and will be around for a long, long time. But it's also because we've continued uh, the existence and the thriving of this particular building and we hope the, the thriving of this community. I can't believe it. They have done a wonderful job bringing life back to that old, beautiful mill, and I'm sure they're going to have incredible success in the future. It was a hopping spot while we were there over the <laughs> summertime, I'll tell you. They're in for a great future. Oh, yeah. Thanks for all of your help, Lynn and Bob, too, and the best of luck. Don't go away. When Regional Contact comes back, we're up to Calumet Island.